Innovation on the Edge with Microsoft Edge is a weekly podcast that explores the cutting edge of internet innovation and pop culture trends. Each week, we'll dig into how people are currently using the web to innovate, notable ways in which it's evolving, what its future might look like, and how we can create that future together. Welcome, curious creators, disruptors, and innovators to Innovation on the Edge. I'm your host, Jordan Harbinger, and today I'm talking to Cassius Marsh, former NFL linebacker who has taken his love of trading cards and brought it to the cutting edge of technology with NFTs, which seem to be everywhere right now. We start our conversation in a place many collectors got their start back in the day, a card shop. I'm trying to envision what goes on in a lounge of a card shop. Tell me. Yeah, man. So, uh, like, basically, for the most part, card stores in in the past have been just, like, I don't know if you've ever been to one, but for the most part, they're, like, holes in the wall. What we've done is just basically take it and make it super high end. So, we have our showroom is is across the way um, where we have, like, like if you were to walk into Louis V, you know, that type of feel where everything... Mm is presented, you know, beautifully, and it's got all the top tier stuff, you know, we carry all of the best products that are put out. We haven't had our grand opening yet, but just like the vibes that we've been able to create and the, you know, a couple of box breaks that I've done with uh, Blake Martinez and stuff like opening up vintage Pokemon and it's, it's, it's a good time, man. Vintage Pokemon can't be that old. How old is a vintage? What is like, what are we talking like nineties? Not even, so, right? So they just, yeah, they just had their 25 year anniversary. Pokemon. Oh, okay. I was just a, a young kid, bro. I was super hyped on the Pokemon stuff. So yeah, vintage yeah. Pokemon. Most of the, the like top tier boxes come from like 96, 97. Okay. That makes sense. What, yeah. what do those boxes go for? Like how much are card boxes of that? So that a, age? a first edition, uh, base set unlimited right now is anywhere between 400 to like 750 K depending, you know, on the, Whoa. yeah. Some people value wow. them at like a million dollars. Uh, it's, it's, you know, kind of all over you, the place. Honestly, you, you keep those then in a vault. Those are not like sitting I, under some freaking thing. Yeah. No, cash we ha- <laughs> yeah. We have a, uh, we definitely have, uh, several safes, um you know in different in different places so we uh we definitely keep that type of stuff safe you know like a first edition Yu-Gi-Oh, which is even younger a uh, first edition mm-hmm. like a blue eyes white dragon Yu-Gi-Oh box is like over fifty thousand dollars now yeah and uh wow. magic the gathering like it just some of the prices for you know these trading card games have really really skyrocketed man so uh it's it's pretty it's pretty cool to see and to be a part of and obviously it's a, a super fun business as well So this is a good transition or segue to the NFT stuff, because when I think NFT, right, we've all heard the news of like, oh, people sold this digital art for $69 million or like, hey, somebody sold a tweet for $17,000 and you're just like, whatever. But then if you hear about the actual cards, this isn't so far off. Now, $69 million is something else. But like a lot of these other digital assets they're not super far off from what people are paying for physical cards without anything digital on the back end. It sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my the easiest way, like if somebody's asking me what an NFT is, right? They hear mm-hmm. that you know I've co-founded a an NFT company, and they're like, "What? You know, what is it? Can you like? How, like yeah, I don't understand." The easiest way to put it is that it's a uh, cryptocurrency tied to uh, a trading card. Basically, it's. Mm-hmm. it's that's the their the combination of the two. Um, some of you know now they're NFTing like uh, movies are going to come out here soon, um, like shows, like short films, um, you know moments, all kinds of stuff. They're doing uh, albums are getting NFT. It's pretty it's pretty amazing, mm-hmm. you know. But what it does is is makes that asset you know just completely secure and uh, you know just adds that security value, which I think is you know is pretty significant. So yeah, the security element of this is that it is tied to the blockchain which a lot of people don't necessarily understand of course but we the way you phrase it cryptocurrency for for cards this is something that exists not on your computer it's not something you can save and lose it's something that exists on a public blockchain so everyone can see every transaction and whereas bitcoin if i give you some bitcoin and you give me some bitcoin back it's fungible right it's the same thing I'm getting a different Bitcoin, but it's exactly the same as any other Bitcoin that exists. Whereas an NFT says you own this Pokemon card, digital, digital Pokemon card. Yes. And now 
I can't have the exact same one because it is tied to that element in the blockchain, and the blockchain tells you who has what. Yeah, so it, it basically makes every single like collectible or, or uh, asset uh, like a one of one. You know, it's entirely yours, and you know, it has its own place within like you know the release. You know, some people only release like one NFT at a time, but like some people do it based on rarities where. You know, they'll release one of 100, one of 50, one of 25, one of 10, one of, you know what I mean? The whole, all the way up the scale. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's, I, I, it's directly translatable to trading cards is, is, is my, uh, you know, my honest opinion. Do you think that, well, actually, I'll, let me back up for a second. Why do we need NFTs instead of just the cards? Like wh why digital anyway, if the game is in real life, if I'm sitting across from you and I'm playing Magic the Gathering or Pokemon, why do I even need the digital element? I'm not going to use it, right? You don't need any of this stuff. That's true. It's all it's all a lot, <laughs> You know right? what I mean? Yeah. It's I've survived it's, this long without a Yu-Gi-Oh box. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. So it's, you know, just like any luxury, you know, you don't need a Louis Vuitton uh Louis Vuitton like duffel bag. You don't need, <laughs> you know, a Supreme wallet or a Supreme backpack or so whatever, you, you know what I mean? You don't need any of that stuff. So um, you don't need trading cards. There's no, you know, it's a luxury and it's, you know, um, yeah, man, it, it's just like trading cards. It's really a luxury, you know? Um, so there, there is no playing with it. It's, it's not like, uh, um, trading card games where you can actually like play the game. But now at this point with, with trading cards, like Pokemon, the vintage Pokemon, people are getting everything graded. Um, what so is that like can, appraised? Yeah, it's it's basically an appraisal. What they do is is they encase your card. So here's like an example, right? This mm -hmm. is HGA. This is our partner. Um, they're like they just started. They do um, they do AI technology that analyzes the cards, and then they have a master grader who like checks it. So basically, uh, there's like there's the overall grade out of ten, and then you've got subgrades underneath that basically tell you the condition of the card that. Um, that you possess and then it's protected forever. And, and you know what I mean? It'll, it, the, it's condition will never change. So it basically evaluates its value and, uh, and its condition. So that card was nine out of 10, but it was encased in plastic. Where did that, where does that poor guy fall short? Is it his fault or is it the card itself? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, that card you just showed me, that player, right? Yeah. It's 9 out of 10. So what? where did he fall short? It's not about him, right? The content no. of the card is irrelevant. It's the condition of the card itself. Yeah, exactly. No, there's nothing wrong with that guy. He's, okay. yeah, I mean, um, I'm not I'm not sure. He's a rookie from last season. But, uh, yeah, no, nothing's wrong with it. It has nothing to do with the, like, with the contents of the card. It's literally, like, the uh, the centering um, the edges and like any type of marks and like how, if there's any printing lines, if there's, you know, it's all based on those type of conditions. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, wow. Okay. And NFTs though, the condition is irrelevant cause it's digital. So it's, it's yeah. never going to degrade theoretically. Right. Ex exactly. There's that. Yeah. There's that element as well too. So then this naturally the question follows. So if anything can be an NFT, what makes the NFT valuable? You said it's a luxury, so the value exists really in our own mind. But I can't make a Louis Vuitton handbag, and I can carry my underwear in it, for example. But <laughs> anyone can make an NFT, and nobody can theoretically use them for anything. Or am I am I off? Well, here? They, they've actually created ways to like display them. I mean, as you know, everything in in, in this world is going digital, man. And so right. the point is, is that it's a it's a it's a digital uh, possession. You know what I mean? Like you can display it. Um, you know, on you know, take it out, show people what you have. It's like it's it's a trading card, but digital. You know, and but they they're creating like these things where you can basically shoot an image of of the NFT. And like just spin it and display it. I forgot the company's name that that's doing that. But there's a couple of people who are um, creating ways for you to display your NFTs. And then they're also like tying things to NFTs, right? So some painters are, are doing like they're doing an mm -hmm. artwork and then they're then turning it into the NFT and they're auctioning off both, right? So there's a copy of the original art and then there's a copy of the NFT. So, I mean... It's 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 all up to, you know, how, you know, you see the value. But I mean, everything, you know, we're going to digital currency. Uh, it seems like uh, at some point here, 
Um, and so I, I think that's really where the where the value lies is, you know, society's just going digital. I agree with that. I think part of the issue that people have wrapping their mind around is, is, is let's say I buy a Monet, right? I can appreciate that as a physical object, right? As, I can own the original piece of art. Nobody else can have it. They can only buy a print of it, which is a copy. But with digital art, a copy is literally as good as the original minus the flex factor of like, no, I've got the NFT, right? Yeah. I, I do I think, think it provides some security as well. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you can counterfeit that painting, you know, somebody, yeah, for somebody sure. could attempt to do that. And that's, uh, you know, especially like, in, for example, in the trading card or like a collectible um, memorabilia market, uh, counterfeits are rampant. Like mm -hmm. it is, it is a huge deal. There's like, I'm pretty sure it's like 30 or 40% of the market value that's sold like in that uh you know in that general market is like is counterfeit so really if, yeah yeah it's a huge huge problem dude you must come across it all the time if you're selling boxes of cards that are fifty thousand five hundred thousand dollars there's got to be so many f that's worth trying to fake oh yeah okay so the other day right we bought this collection of pokemon cards like first edition uh lugia first edition typhlosion like some really top tier cards um, Charizard, Venusaur, Blastoise, all that good stuff. A lot of, a lot of really great cards. So we're going through the collection and I find a couple of very obviously fake cards. And so wow. I tell my business manager and best friend and uh, business partner here at Cash Cards, Nick, and I'm like, bud, like these cards are fake. Like we definitely need to go through the rest of these cards. And it messed with his mind so much because like, uh, you know, counterfeits are such a big deal and we just spent a bunch of money on this collection. <laughs> Like, he's freaking out. He's thinking the whole collection's fake, and, like, now we're hitting up the guy. You know, luckily, the dude was, uh, like, a good friend of mine. I used to work out with him. He's actually, like, the the world's jujitsu champion. He's a really cool guy. But he uh, bought the collection from him and then, like, thought it was fake and told him it was fake. And then it, it ended up not being. We had a, 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 a expert come in and evaluate the whole collection because we had found a couple of fake cards, and it ended up being safe and was good. But thank God he was a friend of mine, you know what I mean? Because yeah, it could have no just kidding. been Joe Schmo on the street, and then I would have handed him that cash, and he would have been gone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's so um, the cards weren't fake, or they, they just looked kind of fake, or there were just a couple bad ones that, there that were turned some, out to be fake? There were some fakes. Yeah. There were some fakes, which is pretty common. Uh, you know, like back in the day, they used to, you know, sell fake packs. Like, so, I mean, it's a huge market. So there's a ton of, like, fake packs. There's uh, fake boosters, whole fake booster boxes, like, They'll literally take the the arts and refill them. That so sucks, you, man. There yeah. was a guy that was – when I was a kid, there was a card store where every kid knew not to go there because the guy had a vacuum sealer, which is like how they do, used to do that back in the day. They probably yeah. still do that. Yeah, and he sure. – he, because you'd open a pack and you'd go, I just bought a whole – you know, you could get those tops boxes that had like every Detroit Tiger or whatever or every team – you yeah, go in yeah. there and you'd be missing all the good cards. And then your friend would go in there and get like football cards. All the good cards are gone. And later on, I think the guy either got sued or possibly prosecuted because he was opening up all the car all the packs, taking all the cards that. out, putting them somewhere else, probably selling them to people. Oh, you couldn't sure. sell anything online at that time. There was no yeah. real internet. But he would sell them like in the plastic and he'd go, Oh, you need the card, it's fifty bucks, or you need the like Reggie Jackson, it's hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. And then, he, but he would sell it to us kids because he knew, like, what are you going to do? You're a kid. You don't get any good cards. You're not going to do anything about this. But, you know, you screw with the wrong kid whose dad is a judge and also collects cards. And you're like, now you're in trouble. You know, that's how you get caught. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> NFTs, I assume you can't. I mean, of course, you can't really do that, right? Because it's blockchain. You, can t you can't fake give. You can't fake transfer. Yeah, right? exactly. If I'm like, yeah, I've got that NFT, you could definitely, like, you could just fact check it. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. What other uses are there for NFTs besides simply collectibles? I've heard about Nike. I don't know if you've heard about this. Nike using something to verify the authenticity of shoes. Like I can see that being useful. Yeah. So that's that's another uh, realm for NFTs is that basically um, you're authenticating items, right? So mm -hmm. if I turn yeah. if I turn a uh, you know a Gemmin Ten First Edition Charizard. And I NFT it and authenticate it. You know what I mean? Off on you mm -hmm. know if you authenticate a, a glove, 
you know, a famous glove from a baseball game, a, you know, baseball hat or a, a basketball from a certain game and like all that kind of stuff. They're basically taking certain spots, uh, like blemishes on these pieces that like stick out and are, are specific to like that, you know, authentication. And they're, mm. they're, they're, ma- they're creating the NFT based off that and like certifying it. So that's another, you know, another like added value to, you know, NFTs. Uh, I don't, uh, not too many of those have, have released. They haven't, nobody's really started doing that. Uh, yeah, yet. You, it's too new. There's I not, had that's her- not- it's kind of funny like you have that information. That that's good information. Yeah. That's good research, bud, because uh, that's not something everybody even in the NFT spaces knows yet. Oh, yeah. Nike patented this. It's a, it's a, I don't know much about it other than what I just told you, but Nike yeah. patented a method to verify sneakers' authenticity using an NFT system. It's called Crypto Kicks, or, which is a dope name, actually, great, I think. Great name. And uh, it seems like that's a really practical way – I had no idea how it worked, though, because I, I'm thinking, how on earth are you going to look at a shoe and, I mean, and then say that's the shoe that's represented on the blockchain? But if they can find a way to make that part harder to counterfeit, you know, you can't just put a QR code on there. So I'm going to print a QR code on anything. They're going to have to figure out a way to do that with shoes. I don't know how the tech works, but they patented it. So it's got to be at least somebody thought about it. I'd imagine that it has something to do. It, it's probably similar to a process like this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're going to completely encase the card. It's going to have like several different like details and stuff like the, you know, the codes and like all that kind of stuff like built into it to where they make it like a like currency, you know, mm-hmm. try and make it yeah. as hard as possible for you to to try and duplicate it, make it not even worth your time. And then on top of that, like. The certain, you know, there's a certain code for everything. So it has like, yeah, I I could imagine how it would work. How much of the NFT market right now is driven by speculation? Because when you see art from people that's not the Mona Lisa going for more than, you know, a a real Monet, it's like, come on, man. So I've actually heard, you know, some things amongst these like pretty ridiculous sales that have happened um where it's the crypt like the investors behind the scenes because all of this stuff is anonymous so you can't see who is making like the purchases Mm -hmm. you know you can't like you can't see uh yeah you know and so oh that's but that's not good because that means that i can just say yo let's make an nft and just drive the price up to like 10 million dollars yeah so just me giving you the money and you give it back to me Right. So I heard some I heard some rumors about the people one uh, that like one of the investors was the guy who who spent that money. So I'm not sure, you know, how legitimate all of them are. Um, I think there is a little bit of speculation, you know, with stuff like that happening. But I mean, it's it's because it's all driven, you know, through cryptocurrency and, and stuff. So it's it's just it's a lot it's a lot more complicated. But I think that there it's 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 not all that. For sure. I think that there's a lot of value behind it, uh, you know, in the collectible space and like the security and stuff and all and all of that. So I think that a a lot of it is, uh, you know, just, you know, the general market. But there's definitely some stuff like that. You know, I've heard several different rumors about some other ones, too. I don't think like the people ones the only one that's like that. And I'm not even sure if that's true, but I've heard like several rumors, you know, so that's. Yeah, well, you're in the space, so you'd probably hear it from people who know what happened or or can look and see some shady shenanigans because i've heard that too from other people in the nft space where they say and don't get fomo for not becoming a digital artist you know like this isn't all it's cracked this isn't exactly what you think it is uh i do wonder what you think since you're in this exact space what do you think of those like nba top shots where those are nfts of let's say a video clip of lebron doing a dunk and those suddenly became worth supposedly worth hundreds of thousands or possibly millions of dollars uh yeah. almost overnight it, yeah, but it's like so, a youtube clip like i can watch the same freaking clip on youtube what's the difference right that's how are those worth money that's what people don't understand yeah i think what it is is that it's literally a captured moment in time you know so it's it's like mm-hmm. owning a piece of history um which i think is is pretty is pretty awesome you know what i mean uh some so there's some pretty well, not pretty, extremely famous plays that have happened in sports 
that like if that was like uh for instance like that Jordan shot where he banks it off the you know banks it off the rim and for the for the W and mm. then he turns and gives the fist pump if yeah, that was yeah. an NFT that'd be a huge part of history you know and you own that that clip that moment you know you can access it I think it's definitely a very new concept and it takes you know understanding the where where you know our market is going to you know you've you've got to change your mindset to something new because like uh like we've you know i've continued to say everything's going digital so you have to kind of wrap your mind around that first before you can even figure out you know like uh make it make sense to you you know yeah it's true because i a part of me that is and i'm in the digital world right i'm a podcaster i've been doing this for a decade and a half i've been in this space for a while i'm pretty decently educated on the digital market but right. i do wonder what this will do to the physical art market because it still seems like people would want physical art and collectibles like do you yeah. do you see a time which you personally look at all those cards that you have at your store and you go well there's going to be some old timers that want these but all my stuff is digital all the stuff i have in my house my collection is all digital i don't think so no because uh, it's like uh there there's still a piece of history you know mm -hmm. um yeah it's it, it's I think it actually becomes more valuable because at, 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 in a certain time, they'll probably stop releasing stuff like that. You know, the, the physical, they, physical, yeah, cards. the physical yeah. will probably go away at, at some point. And so having those will be even more valuable because you, you, you literally couldn't go out and get them, you know, new ones if you wanted. So I think, um, you know, it's all history, man. Uh, as time goes on, it's, it's, I, especially in the collectible space, man, everybody just wants to have a piece of history, uh, uh, something that's, you know, extremely rare, that's tied to a certain player. Um, you know, Honus Wagner, Wagner was a was a, was an amazing player back in the day. And like his his rookie card is is like, you know, it's it's like the Holy Grail. And is that the card they say is like the Rolls Royce of trading cards or something like that? I read about yeah. that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's sold for like five, like over five million dollars. Actually, the LeBron James one of his rookie cards was that was actually only out of ten. It was like a number, it was like number five or six out of ten, and it sold for five point four million dollars, bro. That's crazy. That's you know? crazy. Yeah. And that card's not. I mean, it's old. But it's not that old. And then, I mean, he's still playing, so it's not that old, right? Like, yeah, yeah. NBA and, careers are not that long. Exactly. And then Luka Doncic, he he had a a rookie card uh, that sold for four point like six million dollars, dude. Like, uh, you know, and he's only been in the league like this is his third season in the NBA. Yeah. So the physical stuff has to. I mean, nobody's gonna. I shouldn't say nobody. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around getting a digital signed basketball when I can have an actual signed basketball, right? I would much rather have the Michael Jordan signed basketball than a photograph of the ball in an NFT form. But I yeah. guess I can see the flex of having both. But I think, though, like something like that, like an NFT of a signed ball, I don't know that that would be the greatest idea for an NFT, you know? Mm. Obviously, people are going to put a lot of crappy NFTs out there because there's yeah. a ton of money in it. So they're, the, the market's getting flooded with a lot of like a lot of crap, you know? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, cryptocurrency back in the day, like 2017. Yeah, the, the, crap, the crappy coins, the, the altcoins that are not worth anything now. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, 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 it's a similar type of situation right now um, with NFT. So there's going to be ones that are like tied to a moment in history. There's actually a story behind them. There's a rarity, you know, they, they're, they're, you know, part, they come from like a, you know, a good place. Like it, you know, there's crappy ones and there's good ones. It's like, you know, bad product, good product. So, um, yeah. You think those, those unique times in history th that are popular clips or something along those lines are, are great players or think something that's well-crafted. Those are going to be the types of NFTs that will retain value. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, yeah, it would be, I mean, um, I, I think, like I said, with like that Jordan moment, I think that that would be, you know, and if they could, you know, turn that into an NFT, I think that would be so incredibly valuable to mm -hmm. so many people because it's such an iconic moment. Michael Jordan, you know, is the GOAT and, you know, it, you know, one of the greatest like businessmen. I mean, dude, the, the guy is just legendary, you know, so mm -hmm. um, imagine if like, 
a moment in time, like a presidential inauguration was, was turned into an NFT, you know, like stuff like that. I think that becomes like, you know, that that's like a real part in history. I think that, you know, stuff like that's gonna, gonna definitely come, um, not, not, not as far out as, as people might think, honestly. Yeah. I wonder, are, are you investing in NFTs yourself or are you kind of waiting to see what the market, if the market will shake out into something else? Um, I've, I've, I've gotten a couple, um, but like, you know, I've, I've co-founded an NFT company now. And so, you know, any, any type of, uh, at this point, my focus is that. And then on top of that, I'm already collecting trading cards, you know? Yeah, I, mean? I know. And, yeah. And you own the whole my, store. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's my real passion. You know, I love, I love trading cards. I've been into it forever since I was a young kid and I'm super into magic, the gathering and, and Pokemon and actually Yu-Gi-Oh too. I always loved all that type of stuff. So for me, it's the NFT thing. It, I'm not like super into it, but for like the guys who are big time gamers and uh, like who are super into like the crypto space, I think collectible like those type of collectibles like relate more to them, you know. Um, but like most of the time, those guys are really into trading cards as well. So it's kind of funny how the two um, the two worlds kind of are one really. Do you get? a lot of sideways glances when you show up at these card conventions and you're like this giant tattooed NFL player, but you're sitting down and, and people go, Oh, he brought his kid here or something. Like he's not, this guy doesn't collect Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Like, come on. I am definitely changing the narrative uh, for, <laughs> for, for, for magic players and yeah. Pokemon collectors and, and players uh, and Yu-Gi-Oh all that. I think, you know, for the longest, you know, it's actually kind of crazy to think about because for the longest time, these games have really thrived. Uh, but while being unpopular to majority of people, you know what I mean? So, and, and to see it now where it is, where it's like becoming mainstream and popular, opening up Pokemon packs and, and these trading cards and sports cards and like the moments that you, and like the nostalgia behind it is, it's like unmatched. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time as a kid playing either the Pokemon game or playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards or playing magic to get like all that stuff. So, and I know there's a ton of people out there who did the same thing. So it's uh it's just cool to see how mainstream it's become. I can see a lot of uses for the, the NFT technology, of course, underlying it. It start it's, you start to really feel what, when somebody like you is talking about this and you see the passion behind it and the nostalgia, it starts to make a lot more sense because for, for anybody that's having trouble wrapping their mind around this, Obviously, if people collect baseball cards, just the, the thing that every kid always had, no matter what age they were, even if you don't care about cards, everybody had baseball cards for the last, like, if, if you're alive right now and listening <laughs> to this, you had baseball cards at some point in your life. Yeah. You valued those at some point, but they didn't have, quote unquote, real value. Like, and if you thought they did, then why did your mom throw them all away when you were yeah. 12, yeah. right? So, so, like, this is the same thing, except it exists in a different physical space. In other words, digitally, so it's non-physical. Yeah, right. uh, but that, since most – and if you're old enough to remember those cards, then you're probably old enough to complain right now about how kids and other people are too much – always on their phones. So, of course, they're living in that digital space. Yeah. It only makes sense that their collectibles are also going to live in that digital space as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's similar to, you know, uh, like the gaming, the gaming world and uh, yeah. Fortnite and Call of Duty and how guys are, are literally paying extra money into the game so that their character can look a certain type of way and their gun can look a certain type of way and they mm -hmm. can have a certain like movement or emoji or, you know, or whatever, you know, people have spent so much money on Fortnite. Like my, <laughs> I myself, dude, I got into to playing it with my little brothers uh, they're super good at video games. Told they're out like these young kids are in a whole nother league with video games. It's wild. Um, and I spent, I, I mean, at least at the very least, I spent a thousand dollars on Fortnite just so that I could have like the right. dope like, skins. I want zebra stripe guns. Ridiculous. And 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 I wasn't even good at the game, dude. And it doesn't help you. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't improve your yeah. skill. It doesn't make your character any better. You just look a certain type of way. So it's it's a. Uh, it's it's just crazy, man. There's a lot. There's a lot of things changing, and you know, um, it's just different. That digital it's space the stuff is wild. It's the beginning of just all of us straight up living in virtual reality, right? Like if you spent all your time working on, in fact, let me just make it even less abstract, right? Like of course, 
if there was a market where you could buy a filter that made you look a little bit more tan or a little bit thinner or like your teeth looked a little bit whiter, your eyes looked a little bit more whatever yes. green or blue yeah. and it was $150, that thing would be – you would make millions of dollars if you created that, right? Uh, I I think you, you, you know, you might want to. I go think ahead we just came go, up with a business idea. I think yeah. you're not even going to claim that. That was all you. I think you might want to go patent that later today. That's a pretty good yeah, idea. Yeah, I'm going to. That's like the, the people who have those Instagram filters where their like hearts appear on you. I get it. Or cat ears. That's one thing. I just want one that makes me not shiny and makes me look like, you know, a little bit, little bit thinner, like I've been working out. <laughs> I feel like that would sell like crazy and so yeah, sure. and it's sort of just an interim step into all of us just working and living online we just think a lot of us just think it's dumb because it's a video game so it seems like a waste of money but it's not if you spend 18 hours a week or yeah. or 80 hours a week playing that game like that's more you than the clothes you're literally wearing while you're sitting on the couch a hundred percent a hundred percent and that's and you know for serious gamers pro gamers mm -hmm. which by the way is an extremely profitable job nowadays Mm -hmm. an extremely pro profitable job um that's their reality you know their swag online is far more important than their their swag in real life you know and i mean at least you know sure for like if we're talking in a professional atmosphere you know yeah well of course I, i've seen some of those those video game championships i had a buddy who was djing one and i he showed me where he was and i was like wait how many people are there it's like thirty thousand people watching so many um i forget what it's called overwatch that's a great game great game it's it looks really really hard i heard it's like really really hard to get it's, into it, it's, it takes forever yeah you really have i mean all of these games now too complex like you can't yeah. just play you can't just play a video game because you're just no, gonna it's, be garbage it's not even yeah, fun. Yeah. you really have to it's, submerge yourself and learn the game and like practice the skills to be good at the game it's crazy for sure yeah but yeah the gamers now they just wear these like paint suits um or like jumpsuits that have their game uh their country their team logo whatever colors but yeah their character looks however they want it to yeah. and it's almost like the people that we're just human operators now man like the 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 machine it's like driving a monster truck right maybe this is a bad analogy so we'll, we'll see where it goes but nobody really cares who's driving nobody cares who's driving bigfoot nobody's nobody cares about that guy it's been a different guy forever like who knows no one no one knows his name probably yeah. But everybody knows what the truck looks like on the outside because yes. that's the important part. And so that's what – same thing with, with games. And now we're sort of diving into a, a totally different topic here, which we'll leave for a separate show. But yeah. I think in closing, one of the other things that I love about NFTs uh, that I, I like about where this is going is I, some of them, not all, have a feature that you can enable that will – if you're the artist – Every time the NFT changes hands or is sold, you can get a little payment, making yeah. sure that if your work gets super popular and balloons in value and people are selling it and buying it, yes. you get to see some of that benefit. Yes. If you paint something and you sell that thing to a gallery, you get your initial 10 grand or whatever and you're happy yeah. and then it gets sold for $300,000 a few months later, you get none of that. Yes, you get a you get like a psychological value of like, oh, my art is valuable, but you're still eating ramen at that yeah. point. Right. No, if NFTs, it's different. Percent. Yeah. A thousand percent. Yeah. And, and, and it's every single time it changes hands. I think right. that's I think that's a, a beautiful. It's, no, it's not the first or the second. It's every time. So f over the you know, the 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 length of your life you know if if you're if you're doing big time things and people are selling it to come up off of you know what you've created you're touching that over and over it's like royalties you know it's mm -hmm. it's uh it's yeah it's really cool that is definitely one of the uh one of the highlights for nfts for sure and it's automatic right you're not negotiating with some agent and he's not answering no. his phone or his email and like oh your check bounced and the bank couldn't find you because you moved it's just boom you're getting your ethereum or your yep, bitcoin yep. payout or whatever yep. blockchain you're on and wherever your payout is yep. it's just going directly to you there's no middleman there's no it's a hundred percent efficient essentially at that point yes. too so there's a lot to be excited about cassius marsh thank you so much super interesting time I appreciate it, Jordan. Super good to uh, catch up with you. Thanks for the time. Appreciate you having me on.